A thimble is a small hard pitted cup worn for protection on the finger that pushes the needle in sewing. Usually, thimbles with a closed top are used by dressmakers but special thimbles with an opening at the end are used by tailors as this allows them to manipulate the cloth more easily. Finger guards differ from tailors' thimbles in that they often have a top but are open on one side. Some finger guards are little more than a finger shield attached to a ring to maintain the guard in place. The Old English word a three-quarters e cubed mal, the ancestor of thimble, is derived from Old English a three-quarters angstrom ma, the ancestor of our word thumb. History A single steel needle from the time of the Han Dynasty ancient China was found in a tomb in Jiangling and it could conceivably be assumed that thimbles were in use at this time also although no thimble seems to have been discovered with the needle. The earliest known thimble a euro in the form of a simple ring a euro dates back to the Han Dynasty ancient China also and was discovered during the Cultural Revolution of the People's Republic of China in a lesser dignitary's tomb. Oddly, neither the Romans nor the Greeks before them appear to have used metal thimbles. It may be that leather or cloth finger guards proved sufficiently robust for their purposes. There are so-called Roman thimbles in museum collections, but the provenance of these metal thimbles is, in fact, not certain, and many have been removed from display. No well-documented archaeological data link metal thimbles to any Roman site. According to the United Kingdom Detector Finds database, thimbles dating to the 10th century have been found in England and thimbles were in widespread use there by the 14th century. Although there are isolated examples of thimbles made of precious metal Sir Euro Elizabeth is said to have given one of her ladies-in-waiting a thimble set with precious stone is a Euro the vast majority of metal thimbles were made of brass. Medieval thimbles were either cast brass or made from hammersheet. Early centers of thimble production were those places known for brass working, starting with Nuremberg in the 15th century and moving to Holland by the 17th. In 1693, a Dutch thimble manufacturer named John Lofting established a thimble manufactory in Islington, in London, England, expanding British thimble production to new heights. He later moved his mill to Buckinghamshire to take advantage of water-powered production, resulting in a capacity to produce more than two million thimbles per year. By the end of the 18th century, thimble making had moved to Birmingham and shifted to the deep drawing method of manufacture, which alternated hammering of sheet metals with annealing, and produced a thinner skin thimble with a tallish shape. At the same time, cheaper sources of silver from the Americas made silver thimbles a popular item for the first time. Thimbles are usually made from metal, leather, rubber, and wood, and even glass or china. Early thimbles were sometimes made from whale bone, horn, or ivory. Natural sources were also utilized such as Connemara marble, bog oak, or mother of pearl. Rarer works from thimble makers utilized diamonds, sapphires, or rubies. Advanced thimble makers enhanced thimbles with semi-precious stones to adorn the apex or along the outer rim. Kabokan adornments are sometimes made of cinnabar, agate, moonstone, or amber. Thimble artists would also utilize enameling or the Giotche copyright techniques advanced by Peter Carl for Berger copyright. As collectibles, originally, thimbles were used simply solely for pushing a needle through fabric or leather as it was being sewn. Since then, however, they have gained many other uses. From the 16th century onwards silver thimbles were regarded as an ideal gift for ladies. Early mice and porcelain and elaborate, Decorated gold thimbles were also given as keepsakes and were usually quite unsuitable for sewing. This tradition has continued to the present day. In the early modern period, thimbles were used to measure spirits, and gunpowder, which brought rise to the phrase just a thimbleful. Prostitutes used them in the practice of thimble knocking where they would tap on a window to announce their presence. Thimble knocking also refers to the practice of Victorian school mistresses who would tap on the heads of unruly pupils with dames' thimbles. Before the 18th century the small dimples on the outside of a thimble were made by hand punching, but in the middle of that century, a machine was invented to do the job. If one finds a thimble with an irregular pattern of dimples, it was likely made before the 1850s. Another consequence of the mechanization of thimble production is that the shape and the thickness of the metal changed. 
early thimbles tend to be quite thick and to have a pronounced dome on the top. The metal on later ones is thinner and the top is flatter. Collecting thimbles became popular in the UK when many companies made special thimbles to commemorate the great exhibition held in the Crystal Palace in Hyde Park, London. In the 19th century, many thimbles were made from silver. However, it was found that silver is too soft to metal and can be easily punctured by most needles. Charles Horner solved the problem by creating thimbles consisting of a steel core covered inside and out by silver, so that they retained their aesthetics but were now more practical and durable. He called his thimble the Dorcas, and these are now popular with collectors. There is a small display of his work in Bankfield Museum, Halifax, England. Early American thimbles made of whale bone or tooth featuring miniature scrimshaw designs are considered valuable collectibles. Such rare thimbles are prominently featured in a number of New England whaling museums. During the First World War, silver thimbles were collected from those who had nothing to give by the British government and melted down to buy hospital equipment. In the 1930s and 1940s glass-topped thimbles were used for advertising. Leaving a sandalwood thimble in a fabric store was a common practice for keeping moths away. Thimbles have also been used as love tokens and to commemorate important events. People who collect thimbles are known as digitabulists. One superstition about thimbles says that if you have three thimbles given to you, you will never be married. Known Thimble Makers Most of these thimble makers are no longer in existence. Avon Fashion Thimbles Wick Safe Lie to the First and Rena Copyright Lowrelin, Charles Horner, Charles Eels, Charles May, Anthony Stavronaldakis, Gabriel Brothers, Henry Fitkin, Henry Griffith, James Fenton, James Swan, Jean Levy, Joe and Casper Rump, Ketchum and McDougall, Myson, Roger Lenane, Samuel and Foskett, Simons Brothers Company, Stern Brothers and Company, Wade Thresher, Webster, William Prim. Thimblet Thimblets are soft thimbles, made predominantly of rubber, used primarily for leafing through or counting documents, bank notes, tickets, or forms. They also protect against paper cuts as a secondary function. Unlike thimbles, the softer thimblets become worn over time. They are considered disposable and sold in boxes. The surface is dimpled with the dimples inverted to provide better grip. Thimblets are sized from 00 through to 3. A finger cot is a smooth rubber glove finger used to protect the finger or the item being handled. Sewing palm, a variation on the thimble used by sailmakers and leather workers is the sewing palm, known by various others names such as seaming palm, sail palm, sailmakers palm or roping palm. This item consists of a pitted hard plate set into a stiff leather band that is worn around the palm of the hand, with the plate resting against the first joint of the thumb. It is used by grasping a needle between the thumb and indexing finger, with the eye end of the needle against the pitted plate, and pushing the needle with the entire arm. This design permits the sewer to exert a great amount of force when pushing thick needles through very tough materials such as sailcloth, canvas or leather. Cultural References In the Parker Brothers board game Monopoly, first created in 1904. The thimble is one of the eight traditional metal game pieces used to mark a player's position on the game board. Thimbles are given as gifts in Peter Pan, who thinks thimbles are kisses. In the 1992 movie Batman Returns, Catwoman, played by Michelle Pfeiffer, used thimbles to create the base of her claws. The popular TV show and comic strip Popeye was originally called Thimble Theatre starring Popeye. The character Elizabeth in the video game Bioshock Infinite uses a thimble to cover her severed little finger. Video montages and series of clips are often called thimble collections. Auction records, on December 3, 1979, a London dealer bid the sum of $18,000 USD for a dental-shaped mice and porcelain thimble, circa 1740, at Christie's auction in Geneva, Switzerland. The thimble, just over a half inch high, was painted in a rare lemon yellow color about the band. It also had tiny harbor scene hand painted within gold trimmed cartouches. The rim was scalloped with fired gold on its bottom edge. The thimble now belongs to a Meissen collector in Canada who wanted it for its lemon yellow color. During November 1994, 
series Salem yielded a one-of-a-kind Meissen thimble bearing an armorial coat of arms at the price of 26,000 British pounds. On June 13, 1995, Sotheby's sold a Meissen thimble adorned with two pugs for 10,350 British pounds. Additional pictures. References. Further reading, E. F. Holmes. A History of Thimbles. London, Cornwall Books, 1985. J. J. Bonnell. Thimble Collectors Encyclopedia. Illinois, Wallace Homestead Book Company, 1986. E. Zalkin. Zalkin's Handbook of Thimbles and Sewing Implements, 1st ed. Willow Grove, Warman Publishing Company, Inc., 1985. M. Isbister, W. H. Isbister. More about thimbles. External links, Thimbles Collection, Little Thimble, Big Journey Illustrated Article on Thimble History, for Burger Copyright Thimbles.